Today I'm showing you how to make a high hydration sourdough ring, also called a crown. This is inspired by a bread made in the north of Spain called a rosca. It's kind of like if a baguette really wanted to be the centerpiece of your dining room table. Here's how to make it. I'll be using a variation of my 80% hydration sourdough bread recipe to make this ring. Start by putting 350 grams of water into a mixing bowl. Then add 10 grams of salt and 100 grams of active sourdough starter. And stir that until it's all well combined. Then add 450 grams of white bread flour, ideally a relatively high protein flour, something like King Arthur brand bread flour, or anything around 12 to 13% protein will do the trick. Stir all of the ingredients together until it forms a shaggy dough. Then cover up the bowl with a kitchen towel and let the dough rest for 30 minutes. After the 30 minute rest, you're going to do the first of three sets of stretch and folds. After each set of folds, you'll do another 30 minute rest before you start the next one. Start by taking an edge of the dough, stretching it up into the air, and folding it over the top of the dough. Then grab the next edge of dough, stretch it up, and fold it over the top of the dough again. Go around the bowl stretching and folding about 12 times until you feel the dough start to tighten up a little bit. Then cover up the bowl and let the dough rest for 30 minutes. That was the first set of stretch and folds. For the second set, give the dough about eight stretch and folds around the bowl until you feel the dough tensing up again. Cover it up again and let it rest for another 30 minutes. Then finally, for the last set of folds, gently stretch and fold the dough about four to six times around the bowl, being careful not to overwork the dough or to press out too much of the gas. Then you can transfer the dough to a lightly oiled glass bowl with a lid, or any kind of container that lets you see how much the dough is rising. Flatten the dough down in this container, cover it up, and mark the top of the dough with a marker or a rubber band. Let the dough rise for about three to five hours or until it's roughly doubled in size. My dough took four hours, but it might take more or less time for you depending on the temperature of your kitchen. After the dough has risen in the bowl, it's time to shape this dough into a ring. This is not too complicated, but it is a two-step process. First, you'll need to pre-shape the dough into a ball. Transfer the dough onto a dry counter, no flour on the counter at all, and roll the dough into a ball by cupping it and pulling it with your hands like this. You want to create tension across the top of the dough while you're doing this cupping and pulling motion. This will actually help the dough hold its shape better later once you shape it into a ring. So once you've got a nice ball of dough, let it bench rest on your counter uncovered for 30 minutes. This short rest period will allow the dough to relax and then a slight skin will start to form on top of the dough, which will also help it to not be overly sticky during the final shape. So let your dough rest uncovered for 30 minutes. A half hour later, it's time to shape this dough into a ring. Professional Spanish bakers who I see on Instagram doing this make it look super easy, but if this is your first time doing the shaping technique like me, it's gonna be a lot harder than you think, and that's okay. Don't overthink it, just go for it. Start by flouring the top of the dough and then pressing either your index finger or your middle finger into the middle of the dough. You need to press all the way down through the dough, work your finger around a little bit until you get through to the other side of the dough. If you're used to making a standard loaf of sourdough bread and shaping it really gently, this will feel very wrong on so many levels, but just put that out of your mind. Once you've eventually made a hole through the middle of the dough, you can flour the top of the dough again and start to stretch the hole out with your hands. You wanna make the hole a little bit bigger each time. This is sort of like the cheater method for shaping bagels, where you press a hole into the center of the ball of dough and then you stretch it out into a ring. You're just doing that on a larger scale with this ring. Stretch out the hole a little bit more and more each time until the dough forms a ring that is as even as possible on all sides of the ring. Once the hole is a decent size, rework the dough ring gently with your hands, trying to get the seam of the dough underneath and against the counter. You'll have the floured side on top and the sticky side underneath. When you like the looks of the ring, transfer the whole thing gently onto a metal sheet pan that has been lined with a sheet of parchment paper. Then you'll need to rework the ring again, shaping the dough lightly with your fingers until the ring looks nice and clean. All right, you just did the hardest part and the rest is fairly smooth from here on out. Cover up the dough with a kitchen towel and let it proof on the kitchen counter for about two hours. The dough will rise in its ring shape, ending up light and puffy. But about 30 minutes before your dough is done rising, start preheating your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Having a baking stone on the middle rack of your oven is optional, but it's good to at least have a metal tray of some kind on the lower rack because you're gonna use that to add steam to the oven later. When the dough is finally done proofing, score the dough ring with any fun design that you want. I'm just gonna use a simple design, it's a four slash pattern. Each of these four score marks slightly intersects with the next one. Once you've scored the dough, move the ring onto the middle rack of the oven to bake. If you're using a baking stone, you could actually just place the parchment paper and dough directly on top of the stone, or you could slide the metal pan on top of the stone like I'm doing to make it a little bit easier. With the dough in the middle rack of your oven, Add about a cup of boiling water to the metal pan underneath to add steam to the oven. 
Then bake for 25 minutes with steam. When 25 minutes is up, remove the steam tray and continue baking for another 10 to 15 minutes until the bread has a golden brown color that you're happy with. Transfer the bread onto a wire rack to let it cool for at least one hour before slicing. When the bread is cooled, you've got quite the nice sourdough centerpiece for your dining room table. You could slice this bread up into sections and arrange it around a bowl of cheese or fruit, or you can slice it like I'm doing, which doesn't provide much practical benefit besides me just wanting to see what it looks like on the inside, but however you slice it, this is good sourdough bread. Much like my master sourdough bread recipe called good sourdough bread. That recipe is much simpler and a great sourdough bread recipe to start with. If you haven't seen that video yet, you can watch that next and I'll see you in the next video.